Hi, family in Christ Jesus. God bless this sister in Christ. Jesus loves you. This video is going to be about me exposing a false prophet. Another false prophet. There's so many of them, brethren. And if you want to see more videos about a false prophets getting exposed, just watch that video right there. 12 false prophets exposed. And even the one on the right, Crystal Love for Jesus exposed, whether anybody likes it or not. Because I heard what I heard. It's pretty clear. She said the word that is clearly heard in the video, brethren. So you're welcome to listen to this. This is an important video. And all Christians ought to be exposing false prophets with the light of the truth, which is the Holy Word of God. Yeah. So this is what it's about, brethren. Read this conversation. And right away, read Psalms chapter 89. You can read, I can read this if you'd like me to. If you want to just read this for yourselves, you're welcome to. I like for people to read for themselves, for he that laboreth for the truth findeth his desire. And you're going to see the responses from this false prophet that calls himself Dunamis 333. Dunamis 333, you better repent from teaching deception. True faith has love, yet it's not the love or our good works that justify or save us. It's our faith. Read 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Now that is the life-saving gospel, brethren. Those that are preaching against 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 are false prophets. And I watched part of his most recent video, and he's basically teaching water baptism is required or necessary for salvation, which I'm going to show you holy scriptures which prove otherwise. Alright? If you read that, go up if you need to read it again. If you haven't read it, alright, now look at these other responses. I hereby free, I, the sheep of the Good Shepherd 26, hereby freely confess, Jesus is the Lord, Jesus is the Son of God, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is my personal Lord and Savior. Alright, Dunamis 333, how many dates, guessing the rapture date, have you set? How many do you guys believe this person has set, brethren? He's set a whole, set a whole bunch, probably over 50, likely over 50 dates have been set by you. I notice many so-called Christians are more focused on rapture watching and date setting than fulfilling the Great Commission to primarily preach about repentance and, the sh and sharing the life-saving gospel of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. At 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, people are covetous to escape and are disobeying Jesus Christ's command to preach repentance and the gospel, as that is the main thing and reason why we are still here. Let us do all things honestly and in order, is how the Tyndale translation Translates that of 1 Corinthians chapter 14. We don't know the date of the rapture, and Jesus Christ made that matter clear. Yet many Christians believe they are wise enough to figure the date out, and they thereby bring false hope and discouragement when dates come and go, and they often do not repent, forward slash apologize. They merely set another date, and likely are not sharing the life-saving gospel. The good news of Jesus Christ that saves lives, brethren. They li likely are not sharing the life-saving gospel that does help lost sinners get saved as needed. We ought to care for each other's salvation as we should if we truly loved them. Do you agree? Yes or no? Jesus Christ himself said, Let your yea be yea and your nay nay. For whatsoever cometh other than this cometh of evil. Anything other than yes or no comes of evil. Right away, didn't answer my question with yes or no. His response, sorry for having to break the news to you. Your, underst your understanding of the text you quoted is not... The life-saving gospel! Exclamation point. And anyone who thinks he, he meant to put thinks anyone who thinks they're saved by merely knowing First Corinthians fifteen one four is very much deceived. I ask you to confess: Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. And then it seemed like my comment was being hidden by YouTube, so I typed it again. I did not type the words "knowing." That is you adding to what I wrote. Do not do that. I believe you are a false prophet, a steadfast faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and his life-saving gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, justifieth from all sin. True faith has love. Right away, didn't want to confess the biblical confession. If you haven't read it for yourselves, it's right there, brethren, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. You need to confess that Jesus Christ is the one and only true God of heaven and earth. He's the everlasting Father in glorified human form. He's the I Am of the Old Testament. In Him is the fullness of 
God bodily, he is the first and the last. There's only one God. Are you sure you know him? I warn him right here. Beware of denying Jesus Christ before man, as thou hast done by your non-confession. I do confess Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. The word God, manifest in the flesh. And it's like it says in Timothy, God was manifest in the flesh. Yes, so yes, I, I confess Jesus is God. At the same time, the Son of God. You know, Jesus Christ is Yote Vafi, the Son of the Father. You know, and one with the Father. God Himself, brethren, the Word. You can't say the Word of God is not God. Because the Word of God is God. Like, when the Father Almighty speaks, the Word that He speaks is Jesus Christ, the Living Word, brethren. They are one. So, I told him right there, Beware of the Jesus Christ before man is always done, beware of your non-confession. Certainly, yes, I do know my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I confess, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus Christ confirmed his love for us, brethren, not only by the life-saving gospel, which is primarily and it's sufficient, but there's this rock with the cross on it, brethren, in case anybody has not yet seen it. Right there, brethren, miracles. Like as God confirmed miracles through the Apostle Paul and, you know, supernatural miracles. He's done the same with me, brethren. This is for, to get the attraction of viewers that they can at least hear the gospel and have an opportunity to get saved by believing, brethren. So, I ask him this question. Do you agree that these words are true, yes or no? Written by Saint, forward slash Brother William Tyndale, Faith, Love, and Works. By faith. Are we never without love and good works? Yet is our saving imputed neither to love nor unto good works, but unto faith only. For love and works are under the law, which requireth perfection, and the ground and fountain of the heart, and damneth all imperfections. Now is faith under the promises, which damn not, but give all grace, mercy, and favor, and whatsoever is contained in the promises. And this false prophet wouldn't answer the question, like many other people that I've communicated with on YouTube. They're not very courteous people, brethren. And you know them by their fruits. First Corinthians chapter 13 describes nature and conditions of love. Love suffereth long and is courteous. Love envieth not, doth not frowardly, swalloweth not. It's all written therein, brethren, if you read it. So right away he wouldn't confess Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. That proves he is a false prophet. And then furthermore, look at his, God, look at his uh, teachings. Of what he's he's denying the gospel, and he's preaching water baptism is required for salvation, which is contrary to the examples of the Holy Scripture, brethren. I'm going to show you right here in the 1537 Thomas Matthews Holy Bible. This is the principle of the table matter, a principle, a table of the principal matters contained in the Holy Bible. All right, brethren. Hope you guys can see this. The lighting isn't the best, however. I'm going to read this, brethren. All right. To baptize. To baptize is to wet or to wash. And there's some references to scriptures here. Baptism is an outward sign representing in us renewing of the spirit and mortifying of our members in Jesus Christ, by the which we are buried in death with him. They that are baptized in Christ have put on Christ. By baptism, we are received enrolled and written with the Holy Assembly of Christ. So that's talking about the Holy Spirit baptism right there, brethren. There's more scriptures to verify this. The disciples did baptize, but Christ did not. Paul also said that he was sent not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, is what it says in that chapter. We are baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. The apostles baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Baptism bringeth not grace with it, as appeareth by Simon the soothsayer. Paul believed and received the Holy Ghost before he was baptized. Cornelius the centurion received the Holy Ghost before he was baptized. The gallant man of Queen Candace believed and therefore had grace before he was baptized. Acts chapter 8. Against them that say that justification is made through baptism, Search to the Romans, chapter 3, 4, Ephesians 2, Galatians 2, and 3, where St. Paul showeth the, 
that it is done through faith and not by any work whatsoever it be. The scripture sometime attributeth that to baptism which pertaineth to faith, that is to wit, to be buried in Christ, the fountain of the new birth, Titus 3, the washing away of sins, Acts 22. St. Peter showeth that we are saved by baptism, not by the putting, not by the washing away of the filth of the flesh, but by the examination of a good conscience in God. 1 Peter 3, the ceremony of baptism being ordained of God was ministered by John Baptist. There is but one baptism, to baptize, for to teach. To be baptized is taken, for to die. So brethren, Romans chapter 8 talks about, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So there's examples in the Holy Bible of people receiving the Holy Spirit when they believed before they were water baptized in water. So when they believed, they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, there, let, let, like Paul said, let there be but one faith, one God, one baptism, one Lord. You know, one God and Father of all, I believe it says. And this is a good scripture right here. Which riches is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So yes, Romans chapter 8 describes that people, and it requires that people must have the Holy Spirit in them in order to be saved. And they receive the Holy Spirit by faith. And, you know, there's a lot to discuss, brethren. Some of what I can share is strong meat. And you guys really got to read it for yourselves. And know that Jesus Christ himself never changes, brethren. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. There's a lot of phenomenons happening. You know, I, I know what I've read. I know what it used to say in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 6. The lion shall lie down with the lamb. And it supernaturally changed. This is called a Mandela effect. And it's actually fulfilling Bible prophecy. Read Daniel chapter 7, verse 25 or 26. The book of Enoch describes in the chapter 80 and other chapters or at least one other chapter, all things on the earth shall alter and not appear in their time. I remember reading right here, it used to say, if there be any man that hath not the mind of Christ, and it changed from mind of Christ to the spirit of Christ, the same as none of his. So that's strong meat, brethren. So yes, it's justification that cometh by faith. Read uh, in Psalms chapter 89 also describes the New Testament and the steadfastness. If you keep it, except you have believed in vain, it means you have to keep the faith in the gospel.